First, I would like to recognize several special guests in the audience from different levels of government, uh, including the Right Honorable Jean Chrétien, former Prime Minister of Canada, from whom we will hear later, as well as Consul General Fang Li of the Consulate of the People's Republic of China in Toronto, and Minister Councillor Yu Benling of the Chinese Embassy. We also have Mayor Randy Hope of the Municipality of Chatham-Kent, Martin Choron of DFATE's Canada Division, and several provincial representatives. Here at the CCBC, we work frequently with all levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal, from both Canada and China. We're honored that so many officials have joined us today, as their support is crucial to our members. As representative of one of the founding sponsors of the Canada Channel, China Business Council, I'm pleased to bring greetings to all of you from BMO Financial Group. I think we can all agree that we're joining together today with a palpable sense of excitement. Trade between Canada and China continues to grow. We're seeing more investment opportunities in both directions across the Pacific. And just a few weeks ago, Canada and China agreed to establish North America's first RMB trading hub an accomplishment achieved in part by the tireless efforts of a number of people here today. We can certainly be proud of all that we've achieved up till now, but the next steps are critical. Communicating a clear message of what the hub actually means to business and then commercializing it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Jean Chrétien. Monsieur Tripp, President and Chairman, mes chers amis, je suis bien content d'être à Toronto aujourd'hui. I'm surprised to be here today because I'm not supposed to work on Friday. <laughs> you know, that's a problem. You know, I'm supposed to be in retirement. I'm only 81 in a month from now. So my wife asked me this morning, what the hell are you doing in Toronto today? <laughs> But I said, I have no choice. I work for Denton's, and the president is from Denton's too, and when they pay the bill at the end of the month, so I have to be there. <laughs> and not to be enough, I receive a phone call from my son-in-law, who is the boss of Peter Cripe. We tell him, Jean, you go there, so here I am. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to be here because uh, in many ways, uh, you know, China has been important for me. And uh, I'm uh, very proud of what we managed to do there when I was uh, involved. So it gives me a great pleasure to, uh, and honor to thank, uh, on behalf of the Canada-China Business Council and its board of directors and the company that I represent, Bombardier, Monsieur Chrétien, Mr. Chrétien, for having accepted our invitation to, to speak. Uh, you gave an insightful, energetic, and riveting uh, allocution on this very critical uh, China-Canada relationship, colored with your usual sense of humor, but always grounded on uh, wisdom and tremendous uh, experience, uh, Mr. Chrétien. Now it's time to start the award ceremony. All of the details about the finalists are in the books on your table. Uh, I'd like to thank HSBC Canada for being the national sponsor for the fourth round of our biannual awards, and I would invite Frank Venturo, Senior Vice President and Country Head of Business Banking for HSBC, to say a few words. HSBC is proud to be a national partner of the Canada-China Business Council, helping Canada and Chinese companies grow their business. Throughout our history, we have been where the growth is, connecting customers to opportunities. In Canada, our goal is to provide Canadian companies with access to our global strength and capabilities. With an established network in 60 markets worldwide, we offer on-the-ground connections to help businesses grow internationally, and we pride ourselves on being a trusted ally and partner to our clients. It is our distinct pleasure to sponsor the first award, Exceptional SME. I'm going to ask Sarah to join us to read the awards. We're going to tag team this like at the Academy Awards. There we go. Uh, thank you, Frank. First, to help present the trophies and congratulate the winners, please welcome to the stage Consul General Fong Lee and Peter Harder. <laughs> the
The exceptional SME award is presented to an enterprise with revenues of $50 million Canadian or less, and nominees were asked to demonstrate the innovative inclusion of China in the company's growth strategy and to show how successful implementation significantly improved the company's competitive edge and financial performance. And the gold award for the exceptional SME category goes to Phase Separation Solutions, Inc., represented by Mr. Paul Antel, President and CEO. Congratulations to all the companies. The next category is Chinese investment in Canada. We introduced this category in 2010, and this year we expanded it to include Canadian companies with significant Chinese investment. To announce this category, I'd like to invite two vice presidents from the board of the Canada-China Chamber of Commerce, a relatively new organization of Chinese companies who have invested in Canada. So, thank you, Sarah. I'm so delighted to be here to, uh, to, uh, for the Chinese Investment in Canada Awards uh, presentation, uh, present. So the Chinese Investment in Canada Award is presented to an organization that has demonstrated ingenuity, success, leadership, and a commitment to involving inborn investment from China, contributing to bilateral economic growth and to companies' international success. The next one is the Century Iron Mining Corporation, represented by the Mr. Sandy Chin, President and CEO. On behalf of uh, Century Iron Mines and our colleagues, I'd like to thank Canada, China Business Council for this extraordinary recognition and honor. It is especially meaningful to us because it's coming from peers who are passionately committed to doing business with China. Our three finalists are, in alphabetical order, Ivy Business School at Western University, which offers undergraduate, graduate, and executive education business programs in Canada and China. Ivy was nominated for expanding Canada's re relationship with China through education, research, alumni relations, and student-faculty exchanges. The second nominee is Queen's School of Business, which was nominated for its excellence in educational collaborations with China, reflected through the success of the sustainable relationships it has built with multiple Chinese institutions and organizations. Its partnership with Renming Finance University was particularly recognized. And finally, Simon Fraser University was nominated for its unique Master of Arts double degree program in global communication where students benefit from cross-cultural experience and cooperative learning through the opportunity to study at two leading institutions in the field, SFU in Vancouver and the Communications University of China in Beijing. The dual degree program in communications was seen as very unique. I would like, like now to ask Peter Harder and Minister Councillor Yu Benling to come to the stage to present the trophies and congratulate the winners, and Eric Tripp, President of BMO Capital Markets, to announce the results in this category. The Gold Awards for Educational Excellence is shared by two institutions. The first, also my alma mater, Ivy Business School, Ivy Asia, represented by Mr. John Irwin, CFO, CIO, and Vice President of the Ivy Business School, Asia, and Ivy India. And the second... And the second gold goes to Simon Fraser University's Faculty of Communication, Art, and Technology, represented by Professor Zhao Yuji, Founding Director of the Global Communications Program, and Nick Williams Welsh, Director of Advancement. Thank you. I really want to thank the um, Canada-China Business Council for this extraordinary honor. And uh, I'm very happy to accept this award on behalf of these two visionary universities. So on behalf of the Ivy Business School and Ivy Asia, I'd like to thank you for this award. Uh, it's a great tribute to some of the school's faculty members who recognize China's global significance roughly 30 years ago. Our next award category is a new one, presented to an organization in the professional, scientific, and technical service sectors that can demonstrate successful inclusion of China in the company's growth and its overall business strategy. Our three finalists are, in alphabetical order, 
CSA Group, a standards development, testing, and certification organization providing consumer product evaluation, education, and training services. CSA Group set up multiple offices in China that allow outbound produced products to be certified for shipment to North America. The second finalist is Gowling Lefleur Henderson, LLP, leading international law firm with over 700 legal professionals serving clients in 10 offices across Canada and around the world. The firm was nominated for continued success and growth of its China and East Asia initiative. And our final nominee is Hill & Knowlton Strategies, Canada's top full-service communications firm. They were nominated for their work on the Sinuk Nexon deal. H&K most recently received the Canada Order of Excellence for Quality from Excellence Canada, along with being designated one of Canada's best workplaces for the eighth year in a row. Now I'd like to ask Pierre Poon, Vice President, Government Relations for Bombardier, to announce the results of the Professional, Scientific, and Technical Services Award. And finally, the gold award goes to Hill & Norton Strategies, represented by Elizabeth Resco, Senior Vice President and National Practice Leader, Public Affairs. Thank you very much to the Canada-China Business Council, and of course, to thank you former Prime Minister Kretschmann for being here with us today and so many other dignitaries and uh, important business leaders. Now it's time for our final category, Outstanding Member Award. This award is presented to a CCBC member organization irrespective of size or industry which has had high profile and successful business initiatives or projects in the last two years. The finalists are interestingly all from Vancouver and they've all come here today. Uh, the first nominee uh, in alphabetical order is Air China Limited, the national flag carrier of the People's Republic of China. Air China's nomination recognizes the significant investment of capital and resources dedicated to the expansion of bilateral business relationships. The judges were particularly impressed by Air China's corporate citizenship. The second nominee is Tech Resources Limited, which is Canada's largest diversified mining company. Since 2012, China has been tech's largest market by revenue. Tech was nominated for combining commercial success in China with a series of innovative research and relationship building initiatives. The judges saw these initiatives as going beyond business as usual and clearly differentiating the company and Canada. And finally, the Vancouver Economic Commission, which is the city of Vancouver's economic development agency. It was nominated for organizing the largest ever Vancouver-led business and cultural mission to China in 2013. The judges recognized the successful trade mission as producing a large amount of energy to re develop relationships in the years to come. Now I would like to invite Randy Hope, mayor of the city of Chatham-Kent, which is also a member of the CCBC, to announce this award. And I would also ask the Right Honorable Jean Chrétien and Peter Kreut to join us on the stage to help present and congratulate for the awards. And the gold award for outstanding member category goes to Tech Resources Limited, representative by Ralph Lute, Executive Director and General Manager of Tech China. Thank you, Sarah. Um, thank you to the uh, CCBC for the very important work that you do, uh, that you do so well. Uh, and I'd also like to thank the judges. Uh, for their recognition of uh, our efforts uh, in relation to our, our business in China. I would also like to say thank you to our judges, two of whom are were able to join us today. Uh, Ailish Campbell of the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, Yuan Pao Wu, uh, at the time of judging, the president of the uh, Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada. Also, Timon Ledain of Sustainable Technology Development Canada, Jason Myers of the Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters, and Senator Jack Austin. We definitely appreciate their time and energy put into this process. Now I would like to ask Peter Croyd, CCBC's chairman, to wrap things up for the day. Uh, it's been a great day and it's uh, important that we celebrate success. Uh, we need to make sure that the message of Canadian companies succeeding in China and Chinese companies succeeding in Canada, uh, not only companies but educational institutions, uh, is well known uh, because that without, without those messages uh, it's hard to get behind the, uh, the cause. Well, that, that wraps up the formal part of the program. That was a lot more programming than we usually give you, so I hope that you enjoyed it, and please do help us to spread these success stories um, that you've heard today. Thanks to all of you for coming, and please enjoy your dessert and coffee.